is what we know at this point. It's all started with a carjacking in Coco. Two men, uh, well, a, a guy in this truck, we believe, offered two men a ride for money. They get in that truck and then carjack the guy at knife point. So then they take this vehicle and that's when the chase ensued. I believe this happened about 1.30 in the afternoon. We're picking up on it over the last 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, so Mike Brooks with us, HLN law enforcement analyst, as uh, we watch this. Uh, we've seen Mike at least early on in this chase. We first started watching this about 10, 15 minutes ago. Some right. erratic moves, uh, wheeling around, basically doing U-turns on the freeway. Now a little more uh, I wouldn't call it safe driving because we know the speeds would reach about 110 miles an hour. So what are you doing at law enforcement? We know they were kind of backing off a little bit because right. of some of this erratic driving. Well, there's not a lot of exits. So this is Route 17 at uh, South Orlando, a toll road, Mike, and there's not a lot of exits of where he's, where these, where these two are driving right now. So you know, what is the plan for law enforcement? That remains to be seen. Uh, you know, is there, are they able to, uh, to to get in front of this guy? And I and I can tell you, in Florida, they do have a mutual aid frequency just like we were talking about yesterday out in California. California does and uh, so you've got a number of different agencies most likely because it started in Brevard and Coco B and Coco and then you uh, also have Orange County. Uh, you've got Orlando who may also be involved and the highway in the Florida Highway Patrol. So there we see a Florida Highway Patrol helicopter mm -hmm. right there hovering keeping an eye on this guy. We just saw it as uh, the our helicopter from our affiliate WFTV was uh, was keeping an eye. You saw that uh, sheriff's office his helicopter just got, and you see a unit on the right hand shoulder right mm. there so it's going to take him a little while though because it's he's going probably around 80 miles an hour right now mike and uh, and again you were you worry about number one the safety of the community of the safety of the citizens who are driving on this road and the safety of the law enforcement officers we said yesterday you know that was a great case everybody went home at the end of the tour you know yeah. everybody goes home which is which is always a great thing and we hope that same thing turns out today but it looks like not a whole lot of, in front of him right now, and not a lot of exits. So, are some of these are some of the deputies able to get out in front of this guy, lay down some spike strips? That would could be a plan. But is he going too fast, possibly to even try a pit maneuver? And it would be difficult sometimes uh, to perform a pit maneuver because you've got a fairly long bed on this truck here, you know, with a vehicle. With a pickup truck, sometimes a little hard. I've seen one case that we had one time, Mike, if you recall. It was a pickup truck. You see these units along the road there. It was a pickup truck, and they got a law enforcement pickup truck with a crash bar on the front to do a pit maneuver and wiped him out. But, you know, is that going to happen here? We don't know. We just hope it turns out safely and no one's injured. Christy, go ahead. Mike, I, I'm curious, because I know this happens on some routes, but because this is a toll route, are they, uh, all of a sudden, the traffic just disappeared. Do you think they're stopping people from getting on or off, e or getting on exits at this point? Right, well, there, there hasn't been any many exits coming on and off this roadway for quite some time. We've been watching this. Right, Brevard County Police just joined pursuit, and... Uh, Looks oh, like he's look on, the, on the shoulder. Looks like his left front tire is wiped out. Yeah. It was a spike strip that he ran over from one of those officers that we saw on the side of the roadway. They got him down. So that's a good point. They didn't allow any cars on because there's no exits. And now they lay out, right. they laid out the spike strips. So now he's going the wrong way on the road. He crossed the median. And uh, you see right there, oh just goodness. head on into a, into a vehicle. So this looks like it's going to be the end of pursuit. Is he going to bail out? That remains to be seen. Is Let's... that a police car right there, Mike? <gasps> on the left-hand side, he's trying to go. That's not... No, I guess they're just all stopped. Yep, he's now... He's now and you see, you see the people on the other side of uh, 417 trying to get out of the way. Now, this is a good time to do a pit maneuver. And we see Slower one coming speeds, up. right? Little slow, there we go. Well, because he has no control and steering. Now, here's another vehicle here. They're going to box him in, hopefully right here by this uh, state, bed tr state bed truck. And you have to consider the All safety. Right. There it is right now. Out. Now, you want to try to get a unit in front of him? There you go. Oh, my goodness. Now, get Look it. At He's all still that. going. Now, that other unit is going to come around. Now, are these people in there armed? We know they at least had a knife. So you're going to see officers approach you cautiously and try to take this guy down. You see the officer in front getting out, running to cover. You want to get behind the vehicle. And you see that canine dog like we were oh, talking about yeah. yesterday. If they want to get out and bail out and run, they got something for that, too. Mm. Okay. So now they're going to go ahead. And you see the officers t uh, using extreme caution. They're going to go ahead and perform, like we saw yesterday, a, what they call a felony traffic stop. They're going to go ahead and have, there's one out already. Wow. It Just looks like a female. 
Down. So we're going to have her get down on the ground now. Go ahead and deal with the driver. Now, they've, we, they've got control of her. They put her down. You see the uh, deputy with her down there. Now they're going to get him out. What they usually try to do is, is take the keys out of the ignition with your left hand and drop them out of the window and then open the vehicle, step out and with them uh, and have them walk backwards to them. And sometimes you'll have them turn part the way around to see if they have any, any weapons in their waistband. You see the deputy on the left instructing him on exactly what to do. So that person, there's your point man, basically, who's establishing communication with this person inside? It could be, yes. That could be his initial communication. Then the officers in the back who had the best view of him, the best control, they're the ones that are going to go ahead and give him instructions. You know, again, we want to make sure that no one is injured because this is a very crucial point at, in, of this right now. And you see him, he's oh going to try goodness, to take off he's again. Not. He rolled the window back up. You see his left and front, his front tires. Now he's trying to back up again. <gasps> I tell you what, this could be, uh, it could turn out really no. badly here. This could vary because you, that vehicle can be considered as a weapon. Mm. That vehicle. Now, Mike, so person... what's your next move here, Mike? Forgive me, Christy. No, okay, I no. mean, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's the deputy's call here. If he, if they <laughs> try to uh, run over one of the deputies, you know, it, it could, it could turn out, uh, could turn out poorly for that, uh, for that perpetrator behind the wheel. Now, it looks like he's sticking his hand out. Maybe he is throwing the keys out now, so maybe he has decided to go ahead and give up uh, this pursuit. Again, he tried to he tried to get take off with at least two, possibly it looks like three flat tires. So now they're dealing with him. We see him uh, with his arm out. Uh, if, and, and again, you always have to consider that the person inside is armed and extremely dangerous. Mm. I have to assume they're really interrogating that first person that exited the vehicle obviously right now to get information from her on what he might have in that truck. Exactly and uh, you saw that deputy just pull his car right up to the front so uh, make sure that that vehicle doesn't take off. You got another one pulling up right behind him. You've got almost a dozen cars there, around that, at this they, point. He is not going anywhere at all. Uh, so now this could be a negotiation. It could uh, because a lot of times when you get an incident like this, you get someone who is so desperate. Uh, it, it sometimes turns into a, a possible suicide situation. We don't know if it if that is the case in this particular chase, but he has not got the, the driver. He or she has not gotten out of that pickup truck as of yet. Okay, I've got to ask here as we watch that unfold. I don't know if we've ever seen anything like that where someone is stopped and they decide they're going to try and crank it into gear and take off again. What would lead to the use of lethal force? I mean, is that something where possibly you be, well, you would shoot, Mike? Did, it, or, or is that still no, and you're just still trying to well, because well, you got wheels falling off. How far sure. is the guy really going to go? Well, as I said, you can always consider that pickup truck as a weapon. If he tried to run over one of the law enforcement officers, they, it looks like they have him out of the truck now. We don't know. We know there was at least two. People in the truck, they have him there in the black T-shirt, yanked him out. Now they'll go ahead and make sure. Uh, They're uh, being cautious, aren't they? And there's another person. Oh, there's wow. another woman. Okay. There's another woman. So is it a possibility that one of these women could be the uh -huh. owner of this truck? That's where, that's where we're possibly here. Is there anybody else inside that truck? They're going to go ahead and clear that vehicle. There's a possibility there could be someone else inside of this truck. You see someone hanging, and their arms yeah. hanging out of the driver's side. You see two hands hanging out. Now, they probably told him to show their hands because, number one, that's what you want to see. You, know, they, 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 you want to see those hands. Even if they look at you, you know, bad, look in the eye, they can't kill you with your eyes. They can only kill you with their hands. So, uh, again, we got that canine unit in there. If this person refuses to come out of that truck, they may send the canine dog in uh, to use it as a, a kind of a helpful persuasion, mm -hmm. a persuader, if you will. <laughs> uh, and it looks like that's exactly what's happening. It looks like they put the canine dog oh, in, there he goes. and uh, he came out the other side. So there you go. That's a good use of, uh, now, of, he of a went canine. Right down. Was there a stun gun, taser, possibly used here? No, I think it. I think what was used was the teeth of that uh, of, mm. of that German Shepherd or, or Malinois that went in the, the opposite side. They gave. They probably said, "Come out, and we're going to send the dog in." I know I had a case one time of a guy who was in the stairwell. He wouldn't come out of the stairwell. We got the canine dog, put as put it right down the stairwell. He came right out. And, uh, you know, they're telling him, good boy, good boy, on this particular case. And they'll go ahead and clear the rest of this vehicle and uh, make sure 
that in fact, well, it looks like he may have, they may have used a stun gun on him also. Because it looked like yep. he went down, and, yeah. and we've seen yep. obviously different surveillance looks things. Like Mike, two, you're very experienced with looks that. Looks like two stun guns. You see, I see the leads coming off of, uh, there's, a, there's a stun gun, Model X-26, that, the, that law enforcement <laughs> officers use on Good a regular eye. basis. Uh, and you see the leads coming off of him because uh, what they'll do is they'll have an EMS unit come there and uh, treat him, and then those barbs will have to re be removed at the hospital. But, uh, but it looks like this, it looks like everything is under control here at the scene, Mike, mm. with uh, the canine dog coming in. And you, and, uh, you saw that you were right there. They did, look, they did use, uh, two officers use a taser on him because he was showing his hands. So they knew that there was not, no deadly force that he could use against him. And they went ahead and used uh, the taser, which is called less than lethal force. We don't like to say non-lethal. We say less, less than lethal. And now that, uh, that uh, perpetrator with no, uh, with no shirt on, is in police custody and uh, looks like everyone's going to be going home and here it, in this particular case too. It would seem like the perfect time to use taser stun gun because I mean he was not cooperating he tried to take off numerous times yep. and even the the dog flushed him out of the vehicle yep. so hey use it you know and what get him and to go down that, that's and get exactly control right because the all they could see Mike was uh, was his hands and he's come out comes out of there there's always a possibility you could have some kind of weapon in your waistband they don't want to take any chances they went ahead and did what they thought was the uh, was the right thing using uh, two two of the deputies two of the officers using the uh, the taser and and again an excellent weapon especially in situations like this and, uh, and of controlling someone and that's what it's what it is it's an AC Electro ECD, electronic control device. That's what a taser is, is, is called. Okay, let me, let's reset here. Thank you.